let's find all the thresholds for our first hearing loss profile. We'll click Start New Audiogram to be taken to the Hearing Loss Profile Designer. Let's keep things simple by keeping the default settings to create a normal hearing loss profile with normal thresholds for air and bone conduction in the left and right ears. We'll click Start Practice so that we can check our work as we go along. We'll start presenting at a level that's good and audible for the patient. 50 dB, the default, should be sufficient. I saw that the response light lit up, so I know that I'm above the patient's threshold. I'll click down 5 twice to go down 10 dB according to the modified Houston Westlake procedure, and then I'll present the stimulus again. I see that the patient responded, so we'll continue the, to decrease by 10 dB until we find a level where we do not get a response. Once we find that level, we know that we are below the patient's true threshold. So we'll increase in 5 dB increments until we find a level where the patient responds. We'll repeat this procedure by going down 10, confirming that there's no response, and then increasing in 5 dB intervals until we see a response. At this point, the patient has responded at 0 dBHL three times out of three presentations with no correct responses at any presentation below that and we would save this as our threshold for the right ear at 1000 Hz. You can use the keyboard shortcuts to speed up this process, and I'll do that for the remainder of this video to help you see how fast this can really go. We'll use the left and right arrow keys to select our next frequencies, and then I'll increase to a level that should be good and audible if we know that this is a, a normal hearing loss. I'll present the stimulus and see the response from the patient, decrease 10 dB, and continue to do so until I find a level where there's no response, after which I'll increase in 5 dB increments until I see a response. I'll repeat this until I confirm the response several times. Note that the program requires testing at 3 and 6K until, unless you change these settings in the Settings tab, so I'll go ahead and complete testing at 3000 Hz in order to to create a complete audiogram. I've confirmed testing at 3K three times now at 5 dBHL, so I'll save that threshold using the Enter key and move on to the next thresholds. common practice to return and recheck 1000 Hz, and it's not a bad idea to confirm this yourself. At default, the program will always keep the exact same thresholds, but in the settings tab you can mod modify the patient response variability, and it can be a good idea to reconfirm your 1000 Hz threshold just to be sure. switch the ears, you can use the toggle or you can push the E button for ear to switch over to the left hand side. You can also push L for the left ear or R for the right ear. We'll return to 1000 Hz and since we know this is a symmetrical hearing loss, I don't need to start all the way up at 50 dBHL, but you're welcome to do so if you would prefer. I'll follow the same procedure to find the thresholds in the left ear.
this time I'll skip checking 1000 just to be judicious about the time spent on this video. When you're in practice mode, you can always check your work by clicking the Show True Audiogram button checkbox on the right panel. This will overlay the true audiogram that you're trying to find on top of the one that you are that you currently have saved. I can see that there are no deviations for the air conduction or bone conduction thresholds, so I must be on the right track. We'll go ahead and switch over to bone conduction testing and continue finding thresholds until we're all complete. Please note that the program does not default to testing 250, 6,000, or 8,000 hertz for bone conduction. You can toggle between the transducers by clicking the T button or by clicking A for air conduction or B for bone conduction. I'll switch to bone conduction and since I don't have a better ear, I'll start off in the right ear. We'll switch over to the left ear and briefly pause to check our results in the right ear by overlaying the audiogram. I can see no deviation from when the check when this box is checked versus unchecked, so I know I must be really close on my audiogram. Now that I've completed my audiogram, I can do a final check to make sure that I've done everything correctly. From this point, you can continue to test speech testing, or if this, comp if this test were a little more complicated, we may have needed to repeat some thresholds with masking turned on to make sure to cover the non-test ear. I hope that this brief tutorial on completing a full audiogram using the clinical audiology simulation software is beneficial to you, and good luck as you get started testing thresholds.